you see in this place things that you don't see anywhere else, in, the, in Cuba, in the Caribbean, but even in, in the world. Going to the Gardens of the Queen is like being in the Florida Keys maybe 100, 150 years ago. There's nothing there except fish and beautiful corals. 50 miles off the south coast of Cuba is a long stretch of protected mangrove keys and coral reefs that is giving marine scientists hope for the future of our oceans. Called Los Jardines de la Reina, or Gardens of the Queen, it's a place that few people ever see. In May, the New York Times made the journey there with a group of scientists from the United States. Our guide was the Cuban marine biologist Fabian Pina Amargos. This is a very special place because it's, it's well protected since 1996. So it's a, the closest that we can get to a pristine environment. This is like a living laboratory where we can just try to understand the status of wild populations. In the Gardens of the Queen, we entered a maze of mangrove channels inhabited by hermit crabs, iguanas, and large rodents called hutia. They scampered up, eager for a drink of fresh water or a slice of mango. Have you ever seen this many iguanas outside of Cuba? Only in terrariums, but not in nature. This is pretty unusual. They sustain the healthiest populations because they are linked to the habitat, and the habitat is pretty pristine. But the true garden was underwater. There were groves of rare elkhorn coral, teeming with colorful fish. Minutes away, we dove in again, and were surrounded by groupers and Caribbean reef sharks. The Gardens of the Queen have 10 times more sharks and large fish than the surrounding waters. That even when the surrounding waters are very productive waters, and the only explanation for that is because of the protection for, for 20 years. Utilícese toda la ciencia necesaria para el desarrollo sostenido sin contaminación. Páguese la deuda ecológica. In the mid-1990s, after this speech decrying the planet's ecological destruction, Fidel Castro's government began a radical push to protect Cuba's coastal waters from overfishing. 10, 15 years ago, it was banned completely. Today, the Gardens of the Queen is one of the largest marine reserves in the Caribbean. The only commercial fishing allowed here is for spiny lobster. And the mangroves provide a vast nursery for young fish. Mangrove ecosystems have been pretty much eliminated in, in the Caribbean. Here you see everything at its biggest expression. You can really see how everything fits together from the coast to the mangroves to the reefs. Dr. Pina tracks the health and abundance of the garden's two peak predators, sharks and goliath That's grouper. Really in this spot we have seen two goliath grouper in other expeditions. Now, we did not see any goliath groupers ourselves, but a Cuban diver working in the Gardens of the Queen shared this footage of them. The goliath grouper is a critical endangered species, which means it's important from the ecological point of view, but also it's, like a, it's very important as a tourist attraction. It's a fish that can weigh uh, like a small car. It's a huge animal everybody likes. To study these large predators, Dr. Pina first has to catch and tag them. The process can be intense, but lasts only a few minutes. Sharks have declined in many cases by 90% throughout the world, including in Cuba. Female. The baseline data that they're trying to collect is absolutely critical. You can't manage fishing if you don't know how many fish are in the water. It's in a perfect shape, don't worry. Photo, picture. Camera, wait. Okay. Ready? Yeah. 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 But I believe that American engagement through our embassy, our businesses, and most of all through our people is the best way to advance our interests. As the United States and Cuba prepare to normalize relations, there's concern in both countries about how the Gardens of the Queen will fare against a flood of tourism and business. So many countries are eager to invest in Cuba, to trade with Cuba, to develop 
you know, golf courses, marinas, hotels. All of that is fantastic for the Cuban economy. It's good for the Cuban people. It's a challenge to the Cuban environment. And many, many uh, Americans will come when the blockade, or what you call the embargo, ends, and the footprint on nature could be very high. And if, if that happened in large numbers, that could be devastating for, for this area, because you see the coral, the Enhor coral cannot stand a kick with, the, with your fin. They break. Dr. Pina's findings will help inform policymakers in Havana, who are busy rewriting Cuba's rules, rules about how many scuba divers and fishermen will be allowed in the gardens of the Queen, and how much infrastructure can be built here to accommodate them. Success. Thank you. We have one lighter. <laughs> Currently, fewer than 3,000 tourists come here a year, but that number could soar if, say, the U.S. embargo ends and revenue becomes a national priority. It's just fun to see it the way, the way it was when Hemingway left here. Turns out he drank everywhere. <laughs> During our stay, we met several American fly fishermen doing catch and release. They were staying at the only hotel in the Gardens of the Queen, a boat called the Tortuga. Once they get the transportation and the infrastructure able to handle people, I think a lot of people can. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, and then, of course, eventually it would lose all of its wonderful charm. Unless it was properly conserved. Because we'd have, we'd have glass and metal high-rises all over the place. Yeah. With Cuba's record of conservation, Dr. Pina has more confidence that change will be less drastic. I don't like the way that, I mean, sometimes I have heard that the Cuba is pristine because the blockade or the embargo, because we, we have no people coming here. Uh, the Americans haven't come here for many, many years, and still uh, we keep the environment in good shape. And for my view, it's, that's because we have decided, Cuba have decided as a country to do it differently.